Yehovah Malak, Olam Olamad. Yehovah Malak, Yami Rakis. Yehovah Gadol, Makarian Tios. Yehovah Adonai, Yehovah Elohim. Kurios Tios Pantacreta, Kurios Tios Pistos. Olam Olam Yehovah Dabar, Shamiyamim Yatseb. Ibasilian Kurios Otios O Pantacreta. Basilios Basilian Kai Kurios Kurion. Eld at Yehovah. Monon Alatenian Tian Isus Christos. Derek Emonabakar Vishvat Shal. Elohim Dabar Halal. Yehovah Dabar Halal. The Megalogai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, for training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent O Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkano to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone and great goodness and goodwill towards them who come under the refuge of the wings of my Lord and who walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, understanding that we have one mediator between God and man, and that one mediator is my Christ Jesus, our Lord. Though we were dead in our trespasses and sins, yet because of his gracious, riches, mercies, he has redeemed us, befitting us that we will be the people he can owe for the anno calling of the Lord, who would change this vile body like him into the great resurrection ones. Thus, being alive on this earth, knowing that we are the citizens of the heavens, it is always demanded through the infallible and inherent word of God to represent Christ Jesus of the Lord of our God as our only infallible and inherent way of life to be immaculate, called to be saints, rather than proving that we are as a beyonds. To that extent he says, In Christ Jesus of the Lord of our God we have been circumcised, not made with hands, but with the Lord's work being buried in his baptism. Henceforth we resurrect and we walk according to the gracious will of God in seeking those things to be rooted and grounded in love and making up our lives to present every believer before the presence of God the Father to be perfect and complete in all the ways so that tomorrow when we stand we shall not be ashamed. How we could be ashamed? The reason is very simple when we don't follow what the word of Lord God commands us. So dear brethren, we have to be the people as pastor teachers, number one responsibility, to Nagat, this great infallible and inherent word of Lord God, to rightly divide the word of truth in isagogic categories and exegesis, our right duty is to nagad rather than suppressing it. 
kachad or kakad the hebrew word the word suppress meant to say to conceal to hide but we are not here to conceal neither to hide our duty is to follow as lord god the father would instruct us and as he instructs us it is our primary work just to follow his will so that when we are doing his instructions what he has mandated us to do when we do it faithfully he says for us life is more than the food you eat and your body is more than the cloth you wear again in matthew 11 we read the things for which you are not faithful for other man's property how you would think that you would be faithful for your own property and that is what the things pertaining to your true eternal life and the soul and the spirit which has to be transformed from human view point into divine view point in each and everything it is the lord of a god who teaches to us that this life what we are going through is not like the way that this people on this earth of like minded passions would increase themselves by worrying by saying that they would rise up to one cubit but lord our god says when you cannot do that you cannot rise up to one cubit by worrying then why you worry about the details of life so he teaches to us the importance store up your treasure in heaven that is nothing but for your inner man take in the right word of lord god and learn the will of god that is one end and in the details of life he says look back upon that sparrow or raven which do not sow and then he t- says even the solomon's glory is not even equal to this lily so then how much more god the father is mindful about you so in each and everything he says for us on this earth do not corrupt yourselves into this matrix of lusts but rather wake up and look upon the things that are heaven because if you have been risen with christ as we find our summary in the mystery epistles of colossians 3 seek those things that are above but do you know what this man will do we shall continue after this prayer use the privacy of your priesthood in confession of your sins through rebound and let's learn what lord god the father has prepared and kept for us on today's date to the praise of his glory in his grace infinitely divine holy father once again coming unto the grace to dig thy word and learn thy truth father we pray that lord god the holy spirit would enlighten us to learn many of the things through your exegesis isagogics and categories and make up our life to have that meaning and purpose and definition which could purely reflect thy will and as you have said to peter to put on the net on this side and they couldn't hold back that net it was supposed to be broken so father whenever we listen to the word and do according to thy will as exegesis you have mandated us in john 1:18 and not to naga not to conceal but rather naga that is not to suppress the word but rather reveal the truth in exegesis then father we would also enjoy the glorious glorification of your name or your word about thy name to this section father the things that are prepared and kept for us on today's date we pray that lord god the holy spirit would enlighten and challenge us by the things so that each and every word and every thought could reflect in the standards of the exegetical background and help us to understand the purpose of which cause you have kept us alive and rendered us fit hikana oh to the great and unique calling ano in this church age as we consider these things father we pray that lord god the holy spirit would enlighten and challenge us by this message in christ name we ask sovereign lord amen as we were noticing yesterday in luke chapter 12 the same things in comparison with matthew chapter 12 there we read an evil spirit which liveth the man trying to find dry places seeking rest 
But when it hasn't found none, it comes back to the same person. And when it has come back to the same person, it finds that this man is cleansed and garnished. But we find in the Matthew, empty, cleansed and garnished. And that word empty in the Greek has a lot of importance for us to learn. And there we read, sklolaro, or seized from doing the work of the Lord. So dear brethren, we need to understand these things. If we are truly loving the true word of the Lord God. And several times we prove that we don't love the word of Lord God. Therefore, we need to understand first, what is Christ our Lord our God demanding in our lives? He said several times, even in Luke 13, anyone who comes to follow after me, he has to take up his cross. In fact, indeed, he has to deny his own life. He has to love less anything that could be more than me. Father, mother, brother, sister, children, wife, his own life as well. And he has to carry up his cross and follow me. Because if we don't carry up our cross every day, if we don't grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, as he emphasizes in each and every word what he spoke through these prophets or through the work of these gospels, he emphasizes, seek the things that are in the heaven, not the things on this earth. The things on this earth are temporary. The things what you do to the heaven are great and permanent. So for those things you labor, labor for the food which perisheth not. And doing your food what you eat or the meat what you eat is nothing but doing Father's will. So in each and everything you will find your brethren that Lord God the Father has emphasized for us to put first things as God mandates us, as Lord God demands in him. So we shall not conceal anything. If he says for us in John 1.18, Exegeomai, no man has seen God the Father at any time, but his Son who cometh from the bosom has taught us these things, then we have to be the people to exegete the passage. Without exegesis, we are concealing many things. And it will be pain to our heart that we are not listening the voice of Jehovah. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, when King David was asked the way how he has to take up the people of the Philistines, as Lord God the Father mandated, he obeyed his voice and he fought in that battle according to the will of God. And God the Father drove the Philistines from Gaza till to Geber. So you need to understand these things. When the word of Lord God records to us, he did it, he achieved that on the basis because he obeyed the voice of the Lord and Lord God drove them out. So here as well in the church age, when we are going through such kind of a great work in this earth, it is what he knew very well our enemy. It is what he has established for us in his completed can of scripture. As such how we have to fight back our enemy. So he says in verse 25 of Galatians, of 2 Samuel 5, David did so as the Lord had commanded him and smote the Philistines from Geba until they came unto Gazer. So from Geba to Gazer, as Lord God the Father mandated, as Lord God the Father did it, he smote everything that goes against the falsely called as signs. That's what in 1 Timothy 6 we read. A great caution of warning to Timothy to teach, not to indulge himself into this vain glory of this world or the vain babblings of this world. So, in the same manner to smote from Geba to Gezer, as he obeyed the voice of the Lord God and did according to the will of Lord God, even we, when we obey through proper exegesis, isagogics and categories, <coughs> with the right dispensing technique of dispensations and rightly dividing the word of truth, the things that have been committed unto us, we would guard them as we read in First Timothy 6.20, 
by avoiding profane and vain babblings and opposition of signs falsely so called so anything that goes against the knowledge of god we smote them out the same thing is very clear for us in second corinthians chapter 10 where with he says when your obedience is ready getting every thought into captivity for christ that's what the ultimate goal is we are dealing with the true living lord our god on this earth and we obey his word and we do according to his will then our home will not be found empty for the enemy to come and attack so he says for us particularly though we walk in flesh second corinthians 10:3 we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, and then casting down imaginations or every reasonings. That's what 3053 code over here in comparison to 3056, which is called as logas. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Again, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So that in verse number six, he says, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled. The same thing what David did, he obeyed unto the commandment of the Lord God, Second Samuel 5.25. Today, many pastor teachers are not obeying the commandment of Lord God. So they are not becoming the disciples of the word of God. So they are not exposing with proper exegesis the mind of Christ. Therefore, what happens? It becomes, as Matthew 12, 44 says, I will return into my home, epistrapho, to turn back, into my house. The word house is oikos, or a inhabited place where it was earlier. In believing Christ, you have been cleansed. In believing Christ, you have been given a new mind. We are not the same world. There is no way you can fill up in your old sin nature the standards of your matayotes, the vain babblings or the profane things of this world or cosmos diabolicus reasonings with empiricism or rationalism. You cannot be the same. It is not the home of your old sin nature or the thinking of your old way of life. Now it has become the home of an abode of the Lord. We read that in 1 Corinthians 6. Know ye not, your flesh is not of your own, you have been bought up with a great price. And since you have been bought up with a great price, he says, your flesh is not of your own. That is what it is no longer belonging to your own or your old sin nature activities or your first previous thinking of cosmos diabolicus. So it's not the own. You have lost your ownership now to Christ. Earlier you were slaves to your fallen nature, but now you have become slaves or Christ our Lord of God has purchased you with a great price. Therefore, he is your master and he wants you to think what he wants to think and perform in your life. So when we are not of our own, we cannot keep in our mind the thinking to place to the old man the same house. Though it may think I will return to my own house. Where I was earlier, I will return back to my own house. But that we meant to say what? The one who made outward, even he made inward, says Lord of our God in Luke Gospel. And he teaches to us that Christ our Lord of our God made us in his own image, not only in the format soul of Natshama, hitting the divine spark for us, but also your spirit which has been made, as Ephesians 4.24 gives us a glimpse on that, in Colossians 3.10 compared, saying that our new man has been made after the image of Christ, which is endikaiosune kai hosietis te salatia. The same thing we read again in Proverbs 20.27. The lamp of Jehovah is the breath of man. Because these things are very, very essential for us to note. Ne'er, we read that word. The same word is used again to describe in Psalms 119. As one of the people know, it is a very famous verse. They love to put upon their Bible societies. They love to describe that upon the Bible. And they say, this is what it is for us. 
but in the Hebrew we have a lot of information on this verse in the noon file when we read this. It says in the English, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. But here we don't find this essence as we find in the Hebrew thought. The Hebrew thought describes to us in very simple words. It says in the Hebrew that the lamp to feet of me, it is the word of you. The lamp, as we read Proverbs 20:27, the same ne'er, it is the foot to me, or it is a light to my feet, because, and that lamp is nothing but it is your word of God. When we read Proverbs 20, 27, we said the light and the lamp of Jehovah. Instead of the light on the lamp of Jehovah, you would say the word of Jehovah is the breath of human. That's very simple terms for us to understand. Because here it describes in 119 verse 105, the light to the feet of me is your word. The same thing for every breath a man takes, if ever he is alive, it is nothing but the word of Jehovah. We need to understand this in this context. The light or the lamp what you take, or the breath what you walk, it has to be for your feet, he calls regil. Your lamp to the feet of me is your word of God. And the very breath what man breathes is nothing but it has to be the word of God. So it cannot be to the house of the old one. It cannot be to the house of your human reasoning, human viewpoint. Christianity is nothing but to renovate the standards of your thinking from human viewpoint into divine viewpoint. You need to consider your new man. Your new man cannot survive apart from the exegetical word. Your new man cannot survive without proper isagogics and categories of the word of the Lord. Your new man cannot understand the true life without dispensations. And that's what people are failing to do as the word of Lord God demands us to do. Therefore, the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, he has to be a teaching shepherd. His duty is to nagad, not to suppress, kachat. If he would suppress, conceal and hide the things that belong to the word of Lord God and to his glory, you are suppressing them and in return, the things that you suppress on the people that they should come to know through that word of God with proper exegesis and they should glorify my Christ by living a true way of life in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that glory which they are lacking or due, you need to pay it back. And that's what it happens, dear brethren. Whenever you become a hurdle or a stumbling block, you know, whenever you find for the things what you measure back, the same things will be measured back unto you. You become a hurdle for the word of God. The word of God will become a hurdle in your life. You become a hurdle for the work of the Lord. The same work of the Lord will hurdle back everything in your life. You will not understand this concept. Until unless you will face it in your life. You will not realize why such things are happening to your life, why you don't have that peace of God. Maybe you have put a block to the stumbling, to, we have become a stumbling block and put a block to the work of the Lord. Remember that. Therefore, you suppress. The same thing what you measure back, the same thing will be given back to you, dear brother, and you need to be allowed with this principle. Therefore, for first thing first, always Lord's will be done. You have to be a man readily available to carry your cross every day. You have to be the people in doing the will and the work of God every day. Because the lamp of your feet, what he calls to be the word of God, in Proverbs 20:27, 20, that lamp or light of Jehovah is the breath of human. And now you replace that light or lamp with the word of God. And that word of Jehovah is the breath of the human. 
and you don't have that word of God in you, you don't have wrath in you, though you may be physically alive. Therefore, Matthew 4, 4, Luke 4, 4, Deuteronomy 8, 2 through 4, we read, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. So in each and everything you take, it is the word of God, word of God, word of God. And the people who are lacking in the present COVID-19 sicknesses, it's a sicknesses for their breath. And now imagine if that breath to be replaced by the word of God, then the sicknesses, what they're suffering is purely because of the lack of the word of God in their lives to operate their frontal law. You have to understand this because if it is the lamp of Jehovah, the breath of human nature, the breath of human, and that lamp you replace with Psalm 119 in verse 105, you will truly understand that it is nothing but the word of God. And the lack of word of God is dealing in your mind. And when you lack to look upon the heavens above the heavens above the heavens, my Lord God, who is in that way, because even that heavens above the heavens above the heavens cannot contain my Lord God. And you think you can suppress him in a small home built by your hands. And you're depending upon the small home rather than looking upon the heavens above the heavens above the heavens who has a lot of information. And that lot of information could be expounded only through exegesis. And that exegesis will give you to have greater breath and greater word of God to survive and perform the will of God. So you're not doing what the word of God demands. You're not performing what Lord God mandated them to do. When they put a strange fire, Nadab and Abihu, Lord God the Father consumed them. Today, many of the lives in the present Christendom are putting stranger way of worships towards my Lord. As they thought of Samuel, uh, before Samuel could come, Saul thought, why couldn't he go and offer? And the way how he did, it was counted as sin. The king's hand which withered away because of the prophet when he prophesied. In First Kings, we read that passage. Why, when they have lack of fear towards Lord God, Lord God the Father shows to them. And then he explains to them, it's Aaron's rod that birded. He's showing them that authority sign given to them. And above all, he's now instructing them the things, how they have to follow it. Coming to the church age, he has made every believer to be the royal priest. And he has given to every believer to confess to God the Father their sins, so that they shall not lack in time or waste the time, but rather in return they could be alert to the word of God, to the will of God, and perform the glory of God by using their own privacy of the priesthood in confession of their sins through rebound, and let, and let they come back and serve the Lord God by walking in the Spirit, if ever they live in the Spirit, and while they're walking in the Spirit, let them be controlled of Lord God. The Holy Spirit has marching work. That's what we read the word, Hagios of Jude 14. Immaculate pilgrimage festival for you because of your great display of your holiness. And that great display or a living exhibition of your holiness, you make the people to tremble and you consider that to do it every circle by circle, that is day by day, that's the same procedure, you do it. That's what he calls us to be hagios. And yet what is happening today in our pulpits? We don't go ahead for hagios any longer. Though we have been called to be the saints, the reasons are very simple because we are not understanding the very breath what you take, it has to be the word of God. But you survive to depend upon your ventilators. You survive to depend upon the false teachings of this man. Therefore, you need to understand the ownership of the house is being changed. Matthew 12, 44 clearly describes to us, it says, I will go to my house. But now the ownership is being changed. You have been bought with a great price, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. And since you have been bought with a great price, the ownership is being changed. You no longer depend upon the details of life. You need to know now, the light to your feet is the word of God. 
Now you replace that ne'er, the same word, what has been used. Lamp of Yehovah is the breath of life in Proverbs 2027. 20, now you have to replace that light with the word of God. Word of Yehovah is human's breath. And what is the word of Yehovah? If he mandates us to do right thing in a right way, then we have to follow it no matter what. Whether there may be a categories of the people who would believe, whether there may be people who would realize that the things pertaining to doctrine in the church age demands that we need to carry our cross every day and follow my Christ. Whether they believe this or realize it or not, our primary work is to just follow as the word of God says. Looking upon the church age, Matthew 13, 52, when Christ our Lord our God discourses us, we have to join as disciples and grow up as grammatias. That's the ultimate rule for us. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, he teaches to us that we have to go and make disciples of all the nations. For that cause, the authority of the power has been given to you. And you're not realizing what about this authority of power in exousia in comparison with Luke 4, 6 and 8. Satan says that I have the power that is exousia to give you this entire world. But at Christ our Lord our God will not bow down, and he knows how to get back this world to the Lord. And then how does he say in Matthew 28, he says, I have given you the same exousia authority. So go and make disciples of all the nations. I want in all and each and every nation that the name of Elohim, that is Jehovah Elohim, could be called upon for their salvation. So it is not just making them to believe in Christ, but rather making them to understand that we are a great creation of God, kinekatesis, of great gladness, of great joy. We are a great creation of great honor in the Lord, and we are a great creation which walk in truth before the Lord, and the people should tremble by looking upon our joy and happiness, and they should come to believe in the Lord because of this great walk that we walk in the exousia authority of my Christ in making disciples of all the nations. You know, anyone loves the truth. It is the truth which shall reign forever and forever. And Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God alone said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But if we are not communicating the truth, then the real problem begins. If we aren't searching the truth, the trouble begins. If we are not seeking, neither knocking nor asking to God the Father to provide us the truth, then we are asking the world to give many evils and many distresses for us. And what is that that is hindering you not to ask or seek or search for the truth? And that is what you and I should search before the Lord of a God every day diligently. You have to understand the very breath you take it has to be the word of God. Because that very breath what you take is nothing but the lamp of Jehovah. And that lamp of Jehovah demands nothing but the word of God. Therefore he says in Psalm 119 in 105, The lamp to the feet of me is your word, O Lord. And that word of God which I walk, Ragel, he says that light, it is the same word which is a light to track of me. And the word track is nothing but Nathieb, N-A-T-H-I-Y-B. And that Nathieb is nothing but the way how you tread along with your feet. Wherever you tread along on this earth, dear brother, and if it is not in the word of God, then you have been tread by your own old sin nature and human viewpoint. So you need to understand, the light for track of me, the war light, the light which is a light of life, the light which is a light of prosperity, the light which is a light of great joy, the light which could give great honor to my Christ. So Lord God the Father doesn't go against his word. In each and every judgment when Christ our Lord of God speaks to them, the word which I speak, that alone judges you. I haven't come here to judge. But the word of God, what it abides forever, though the heaven and the earth will vanish off, those words alone will judge you. So he says, 
the very breath you take it has to be the word of God and the very walk you walk the peripatao walk that's what we have been said in Galatians 5 if ever you live you have to you have to live in the spirit that's very important for us in Galatians 5 because how you could think there is a combination between breathing or if you are alive you have to walk in the spirit the same principle of Psalm 119 105 you breathe, that is the breath of Jehovah, the word of God. Then if you are breathing the word of God, if word of God itself is your breath, then you need to walk. That's what he calls over here, Nati Eve, the trading. The things that you walk under your feet. Then how you need to walk? The light, he says. Again, for us in Galatians 5, 16, he says, it is the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, wherewith you need to walk. So the logic is very simple for us from these words. If ever you live, if ever you breathe, it is the word of God. And if ever you walk, it has to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in return, which is nothing but again the word of God. And therefore he says, if ever you march or if ever you walk, peripatao, he says in Galatians 5.25, you need to march in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, one step ahead further. So if you live, it has to be in the Holy Spirit of God. If ever you walk, it has to be in the Holy Spirit of God. And if ever you walk, you have to just march in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, declaring the commandments of God through the holy manner walk of life that you're going through. So dear brethren, the lamp to your feet is the word of God. The breath, the same lamp, what we use in the air, is that lamp of Jehovah is the breath of human. So in simple words, it is nothing but the word of God, which has to be the breath for human nature. And that word of Lord God searches each and every details of your facets in your soul and spirit. It searches your betain, we read that word. It searches your hunger. It searches your faculty of thinking. It searches and declares you to know if you don't believe in the word of God and the work of God, then quite obviously you will end up in your shoel, the details of life called as hell now for you without word of God. And when you die without my Christ, the real one wherewith Christ, O Lord of God, also cautions in Luke 12, saying that, Do not fear them that they could only kill your body, but fear them that they could kill beyond your body, called as your soul and spirit, because that will be a torment for you forever. And who are the people that you need to fear that they kill your soul and spirit? That they don't give you the gospel. They don't make you to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. This will be the people that you need to fear. And God the Father sent his Son for us to be a mediator between God and man. And that one mediator describes to us, Though you were dead in your trespasses and sins, he has quickened us through his great riches of love and mercy, so that we could be the people to the praise of his glory in his grace by understanding that the lamp to our feet will be the word of God and the every path you walk, it will be the light, which is nothing but the word of God. The same principle what we read. So now understanding these things, what does man do? In spite of giving this great information, what is man? Man is always a rebellion in nature. We find a sad thing of description for us in the book of Deuteronomy pertaining to the way how this man leads in his walk. It should certainly prick our hearts. Though God the Father makes the song to be a witness, he, realize, he teaches to us to realize that what are we in our old sin nature to the Lord. Do you know what does man always do? He always comes up with a brilliant thought known as rebellion to the simple plan of God, what he has given for us. Hear and obey and you shall prosper, says the word. But they say, no, Lord, we shall not hear. And though we hear, we will become arrogant, colossed in our human in nature. And then we think that we could honor thee, but in return we will be the greatest men, thinking that we have honored you, but in return we are the greatest traitors of all time. If you have your Bible, to look upon the fate of man, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, in verse number 20, you would truly understand what this man is all about. He says for us, beginning with verse number 20, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, that, 
For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves, and waxen fat, and they will turn unto other gods and serve them, and provoke me and break my covenant. In the Hebrew it says for us that I shall bring him to the ground, Adama, which I swear to fathers of them, which is gushing with milk and honey. The first thing, a great prosperity of the land. Today, we compare that to the great grace of our Lord of our God. In spite of we being wretched ones, believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the prayer prayed for us in John 14, 16 and 17, so that we would love him and keep his commandments for the prayer of his begging to, to God the Father to give us Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Lord God the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. He has given grace upon grace, and that's a land gushing with milk and honey. You could call one the completed kind of scripture for milk, and for honey it would be the word of God, or the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The two things you can compare over here. The first thing, milk, you could say the word of God, and the second, honey, you can compare that to the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So, you say now we have been a land gushing with milk and honey. We have been really given enough grace upon grace. Though we grieve and squelch and wax and lie and resist to the indwelling entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as the word says, if ever you live, you need to live in the Spirit. If ever you walk, you need to walk in the Spirit, as we read that in Psalms 119 in 105, the structure of that. The very lamp to your feet is nothing but the word of God and light to the every trodden feet of you on this earth or the every mannerism of your walk on this earth, it examines out. In spite of given to us to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using the privacy of our priesthood and confession of our sins, we are not able to make up, to walk in this great gracious land which is flowing or gushing with milk and honey, and we are not using the proper grace of Lord God, but rather we are making up ourselves once again entangled into the yoke of bondage of sins. And you need to learn about these things very carefully, dear brother. A land gushing with milk and honey is nothing but the present church age, because these are the days of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And these are the days of my Jehovah trading in our lives so that every believer could become confirmed to the image of his dear beloved son and show forth the praise and glory of him to the highest by decoding the scriptures with proper exegesis. So we are inexcusable. We are inexcusable in the presence of Lord God if we don't taste the good milk and the good honey of the Lord God. And you know what the people, as God the Father, would say through Moses to the people of the Israelites, saying that after your departure, they will fall off. The same thing happens today. When the completed count of scripture has been given, people in this 21st century have already fallen for their apostasies to the core. And there's such kind of a great man in our pulpits today who change the order of Lord God for their own pleasures. What the Bible says, they do not want to do it. So why will not the thing which left in Matthew twelve forty four would say, I will return back to my house. But you are no longer the house of you, or your own ownership. The ownership has been changed. The ownership now belongs to my Christ. So in this land flowing with milk and honey, or gushing with milk and honey, a grace of period given to us in the completed kind of scripture, above all in this 21st century, given to us the technology to go back and look and read exegesis through online as well, like the interlinear scriptures, what you have, and decode them with proper strong number, or you have so many other people with their lexicons, TDNT, TDOT. You know what a great prosperity we have in this technology of our hands. But we don't spend much of our time in listening to the truth or searching the truth. Dear brethren, remember one thing. The way what you sow or your activities of your attitude or motives behind that or imaginations behind that of your thoughts, the way how you show forth to the Lord God, the same thing will be measured back unto you. 
whether you believe it or not. As you sow back to the Lord, so you will pay back. Because if you sow to the wind, you will reap whirlwind. If you sow to a grain of mustard seed, you will get a plant of mustard seed. We will not get grapes. With Christ our Lord our God as being a believer in the Lord for you as well. In this great and unique dispensation of the church age. If you don't search diligently exegesis, if you don't make up your time to know the truth, if you truly love my Lord, he says in John 14, 15, then keep my commandments. If you don't truly follow these things and you would think a facet of hypocrisy is enough to my Lord, weekly ones attending the church. Surely, dear brethren, as you sow, so you will reap. And Lord God the Father cannot be mocked, he says in Galatians 6, 8. You have much technology in your hands. How much of your time you are spending to dig in the word of God? There are so many things for us in the Bible, which are a lot of information to be taught. How much of your time you dig in there, and how much of your time you dig in for the matrix of your lusts? And how much of your thoughts you're getting into captivity for Christ? Or how much of your thoughts you're getting delineated or being mixed with the details of this life? Or suppressed in the details of this life? Craving something of your luxuries? Time is too short for us, dear brethren. You're not able to understand really. The land that is gushing with milk and honey is this valuable time in the church age. That's why every believer has been predestined to conform to the image of his dear beloved son. Every believer has been called to have the full measure stature on the thinking of my Christ. Every believer has been said, you are born, you are born as a technon believer in the Lord in the church age. And the word technon meant to say that you come to learn the word of God every day. When you are not able to understand, dear brother, and you are being joined as disciple. If you are born again in the church age, you are born as a disciple. And to illustrate one example in Acts chapter 9, Ananias was a disciple, the man who made a prayer to the Lord to open up the eyes of this Saul who was then and became Paul. And Paul became one of a great line of God in this New Testament. You know, who could do that? A disciple. But you aren't understanding what is the power of becoming disciples or born again as disciples in Christ. That too in this great grace of the Lord God being bestowed for us to understand grace upon grace, truth upon truth. The milk representing the word of God, the honey representing the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Every believer's body representing to become the will of God. Calling you all, you are no longer one of the slaves of your old owner. Your old owner doesn't have any power. I purchased you on cross with the great redemption work. The price that you cannot pay, I bought you with a great price. You're no longer slaves to the world, you're slaves to me. I know what all we have in the church age to learn. The same thing what he promised them in Deuteronomy 31, that I will give them the land flowing with milk and honey. You have entered in there and what did they do? Is giving a preview of what the people we do after the departure of Moses. We have preview through the scriptures what a man is. Is it not? Do you not think you are a rebellion to Lord God's grace? How much of your time you are really investing to the word of God and to grow up to become confirmed to the predestined image of my Christ, like the full major stature of his thinking, growing up as from catarismos to catarizza process. How much of your time would you just check your heart? And we know very well, man is always a rebellion. As he showed to Moses the preview of the people, what they would be today. Looking into our lives, we could say ourselves what a preview we can give to this world. We are really giving such kind of a preview to the Lord. That it certainly pricks us. And Christ, O oh Lord, our God, when he has put in our breath to be his word of God, so that every trading of our walk that we walk, that is the word of God as our light, or light, as we read in Psalms 36, 9. In your light only, O oh Lord, we shall inspect our light. 
If we don't have the word of Lord of our God, we cannot breathe. That's as simple as that. If we don't have this great and unique, infallible and inherent word of Lord God for us to understand, we cannot be the people to trade in where. Therefore, he says, walk in the spirit and it will not fulfill the lusts of your flesh. But we don't want to walk in the spirit. We want to grieve and squelch and wax and lie and resist Lord God, the Holy Spirit and walk in the old sin nature activities, fulfilling the matrix of our lusts. Though the word says in 1 John 2, 15 through 17, the epithumai of your lust, the epithumai of your flesh, the epithumai of your eyes, and your pride of your life, vagrant bragadakai of your life will vanish off. But the one who doeth the will of Lord God the Father alone abides, you don't want to look upon those terms. And that's how, how great rebellion we are to the will and to the work of Lord God. And we're not even bothered. The things that we are surviving in the church age is greater than the land gushing with milk and honey because we have now the complete church kind of scripture. Above all, we have now to be indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in such wretched body. If it were not so for the Lord of our God to describe as an Ephesians 1 that before the foundation of the world he has chosen us to be holy and blameless, then where we would stand? Do you think God, the Holy Spirit, would dwell in us? No, dear brethren. The word hagios, we don't match. When Jude describes in verse 15 and 14, we clearly match ourselves to be asa beyonds. Far less we could be the temple of the living Lord of a God. And yet God the Father, listening to the prayer of Christ Jesus, our Lord of a God, for his begging prayer for every believer to be indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Arata, oh, it could be also translated to back of John fourteen sixteen. He gives us as a token of love upon this man, once again describing after the description of Isaiah 53, once again making to understand that everyone went astray, but now in Christ Jesus, they have to do and proceed the holy arm of seed of the Lord as doing the good pleasure of his will. Because it seemed pleasure for God the Father to bruise his son, that is Christ Jesus, our Lord. So that now through this holy arm of seed, Isaiah 53, 10, we read that. The good pleasure of Lord God the Father could be fulfilled beginning with Christ Jesus and with his wife, the church. Until the rapture of the church, we have a lot of work to do. Psalms 22, verses 25 through 31, the vast woes of God the Father, which we need to pay through the church. And yet, dear brethren, God the Father knows that we cannot do on our own. So he says, I have strengthened you with Lord God, the Holy Spirit, always being in you, indwelling in you. The indwelling is permanent. The fellowship is temporary. Whenever you grieve, squelch, and wax, and lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you lose its fellowship. You lose its controlling work. And why you grieve and squelch and wax and lie? Because you don't love to honor the truth. That's why. You don't become sober. You don't grit up the lions of your mind. You don't understand this unique dispensation. You don't understand this unique calling. You don't understand that you are called as kinekatesis, spiritual species of a new kind never existed earlier. And you will not understand that the battle is intensified to the core. The judgment of Satan has been there about to execute when the rapture of the church occurs. And Satan knows its time is short, Revolution 2, well, it want to pick it up as many as with it and lick and take them to the lake of fire. And we have been kept in Jude to say in verse number 21 and 22 to pull them back as many as we can, provided when we grow up in grace and become the grammatias in Christ. And though such kind of a great land flowing or gushing with milk and honey is a time for us, as the people, they entered, and we know the history of the Israelites. That was a preview to show to Moses, because God the Father is the one who knows the end from the beginning. Who could be a counsel to the Lord? He teaches us the end from the beginning. 
He knows what we will be in the church age. He knows very well. If we miss the mark to obey to the word of God and to walk according to his will, he knows very well what will be our fate. The man who began to be a man after Lord God's own heart, till he could repent and get back, saying for the crime or for the sin that he has done, giving an occasion to the enemies of the Lord, he records in First, Chron First Chronicles chapter 15. And that thing did not please the Lord. So he knows the end from the beginning. The man who began to be a man after Lord God's own heart become a man. The thing what he did did not please the Lord God. You know, everything the man loves to do it. So he says for us, do not go to be in the fellowship of your old sin nature. Get back and use the privacy of your priesthood. Be constantly be mindful, as he says in Ephesians 5.18, 5, as an imperative mode of command. Be controlled, be controlled, be controlled. Be always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Take in the word of God. Make the word of God to be meditating in your mind. Take in the word of God because it's your breath. Take in the word of God, it's your light. Wherever you trade in, if you don't trade in according to the word of God, you're going to lose it. So he says, be always controlled of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and perform the will of God, no matter what it is. Trade in, trade in, trade in every breath in the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for us in the church age, because the things pertaining to you in the church age, you're called to be the kinekitesis, handing over to you the ministry of reconciliation. That's what we are, the ministry of ambassadorship and the ministry of reconciliation for the work and to the will of God. So dear brethren, we need to understand about these things very carefully. We cannot let go so easily, dear brethren, what we have been called for in the church age. So he says for us, even pertaining to the church age faith, many are called, few are chosen, the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. Because you did not walk in the narrow path. You did not walk in the straight gate which I called you to walk. And in that day you may say, Lord, Lord, in their presence we ate and we drank. That is, we partake in your elements. Then he says, I never knew you, workers of iniquity, depart from me. In that day you will say, Lord, Lord, I did prophesy. In that day you will say, Lord, Lord, I did this, I did that. But you haven't done the will of God the Father. He says, depart from me. The apostasy of the present Christendom stated long back, even in Luke 18, 8. The church is ending up in apostasy because of these people not caring and doing the will of God as he mandated us by trembling in his word and doing his will. The same thing giving a preview of attraction for us, particularly about the departure of Moses, what these people will do. He says that they will the, the land which has swear them that flows with milk and honey and they have entered in there. First thing, what do they do? They eat it. Second thing, they will be satisfied. And then he will become dashen, that is, fat and voluptuous. In simple words, his heart and his ears will become dull to the fear of God. Because he is getting every day that satisfaction by eating the good grace of God. That is what today many Christians are. Many Christians are having the same activities of this, what they would do. In this grace of God, you have a lot of grace given to you in the church age. What you're doing, you're eating it out. You're satisfied in the details of your life. You're satisfied in doing the works of your own flesh. But as it comes to carry the work of the Lord God, you would say no, because you're not satisfied there. Because you would say, who would come and take cross every day? Who would say, who would come and teach every day? Who is worried about this Nagad? Who is worried about this exegesis? Who is worried about this all the way of dispensation techniques of rightly dividing the word of truth in isagogics and categories? Who is worried? I don't want to be satisfied in that work. But the grace of God, what he has given to you, as even Hebrews 6, 6 and 8 teaches to us, the sunlight and the rain will come upon the same forest or the same field. If it produces fruit, it is valuable to the master. If it produces thorns and thistles, what is the word? So you are doing it, the grace of God. You are using the grace of God, you are satisfying for your lust, for a luxurious lusts of matrixes. And at the end, when the time comes for you to depart from this world, you weep and wept and you weep and beg before the pastor to give you some grace. It is not in our hands to provide you that grace. It is in the hands of Jehovah, and he seemeth to discipline you. 
before the sin unto death because he has given you earlier warning discipline you did not learn he has taken you till to the point of death and released you intensified stage of discipline then you did not learn and then we cannot pray for sin unto death because you have to be the reflected glory of god by becoming the light and soul principle to the word of god on this earth but you became light and soul principle to the details of life and god the father knows it's absolutely useless of such man keeping over here because he is encumbering the place of the lord and what does he do before his appointed time he makes him to evacuate this earth that is sin unto death so you may be happy to eat you may be happy to be satisfied you may be happy to become dashain fat and voluptuous and then what does he do when you have been eating the grace of god when you are satisfying in the grace of god when you become voluptuous in the grace of god you turn to other gods the same thing what we are doing today taking the grace of god using the grace of god nurturing in the grace of god and turning to the lustful patterns of our old sin nature and when it comes to the work of god looking upon the time you should be communicators of doctrine you say we don't even have to think upon the milk standards but in doing you will you are wise but doing good you are still kids and the milk which has been fed by the so called dear doctor reverend and doctor it's in the pulpits they would also say serve our belly first because we don't have anything to feed you weekly once you come that's enough we will never break up your father grounds don't worry we will never dob you with untempered mortar don't worry we will just dob you with untempered mortar and then what do they say come weekly once it's enough and then we will ask you to pay some tithes pay it off and even we will be happy with you as second timothy forces gathering up themselves or heaping up to themselves those who think they are pastors who would love not to teach them the truth and they want like men like priest don't worry carry on you all will face at the judgment seat of christ how much you ate and how much you say were satisfied in the grace of god and how much you become voluptuous and giving back to the word of god and to the will of god at least once in your lifetime kneeling down in his presence and reading the word or kneeling down in his presence and becoming scribes to write the word of god you haven't done that at least once at least once and you turn about to the lustful patterns and not only that you just turn about your lustful patterns as he says over here turning to other gods that literally took place but here we are talking in comparison in a figurative way for what you turn you turn to your own lustful patterns and what you do you serve them you become obeyed slaves to them it's not just to serve serving is different in comparison to become slaves the same thing you have become slaves to the lustful patterns of your old sin nature in the details of life that's what it is today in our pulpits you have come to become slaves and the word says for us you despise me because the word over here it says provoke me in the english but in the hebrew it is called as naats n a a t s that meant to say to despise and abhor that means you reject you reject the plan of god you reject the will of god you reject the work of god you reject the purpose of god for what cause you have purchased with a great price so that the one who has left you cannot come back and say this is my house again and therefore he says you despise me you abhor me you reject me you use the grace of god in simple terms to illustrate you have your wife married to you provide her everything but for a sexual lust and pleasure she goes to other man that's what it happens over here rather than being with the right husband she goes to some other old man or in the sense of old sin nature man that's a ex boyfriend that's how it happens you despise me you take my grace you enjoy everything from me 
And when it comes to give me honor and praise, you give that honor and praise by becoming like a traversing donkey, drumming under every green tree, spreading your legs. And then who says again in the book of Ezekiel with the great wrath of the Lord, whose issue is like the issue of donkeys. And you go for your pleasures there. The same thing when you look upon as a Christian believer today. What is your life? Up to what extent you are really glorifying the Lord God the Father? As we read yesterday, we have to be the people like the way in Esther chapter 8 in verse number 10. It said, the people feared because that was a great joy of a people, particularly in verse number 16, that these are the people of light, the first word. These are the people of gladness. These are the people of joy who describe the glory of God. And these are the people of great honor. And the word we read, the word light is nothing but aura, which is again origin of or, the Hebrew code number 216. But over here, the light which has been used is 219. And the origin of that is, it is a light of joy and happiness to be displayed. And God the Father has chosen us to display this glory of, of joy and gladness for Him. But yet, using the grace of Lord God, we spur not. We despise. We abhor. And in the word it says over here, provoke. And you know what they do? They go for the word called as, break my covenant. In the Hebrew it says, para. The word para meant to say, frustrate and make ineffectual the barrier of me, covenant of me. The things what Christ of Lord of our God said, believing in Christ, walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and doing the great and unique will of God the Father. You will be my people and I will be your God. I will be in the midst of you and I will walk among you. Therefore, separate yourself from everything that is unclean in Second Corinthians chapter 6. But we say, we love to take everything that is unclean because we don't want to walk according to the breath of the Lord or the word of God. Though it is the lamp of Jehovah, the breath of human, as we read, the word of God, which is the breath of man, it has to be. We don't want to walk in those terms any longer. So what we do? We take that which is unclean for us and we love to remove or spurn up or despise or frustrate that which is cleansed in the sight of God. You are really not able to understand the right work of a priest in Leviticus 10, 11 to differentiate between holy and profane. They were appointed to be holy unto Jehovah. They were appointed to wear before Lord God, Urim and Thummim and do the will of God. You are not understanding as Judges 5, 5 states, the mountains melted before Lord's holiness. And even the sacred things of the Lord God when he compares that he is holy of the holies and he teaches to us the heavens of the heavens of the heavens cannot contain him. You are not able to understand that word holy as it resembles in the Bible. Kadosh or the word what it could be for you. Dear brethren, we are not able to really enjoy the grace of God that has been given to us by becoming the word of God to these people. As the word says, to whom the word of God came, they became gods to these people. And the scriptures cannot be broken, he teaches in John 10, 35. And yet, dear brethren, he gives a preview about these people. Looking upon our own life, our own parents, our own genealogy of the standards in the people region where we are surviving in the Christendom, can't we look and say what preview we are giving to the Lord? We could truly understand what privy we are giving to the Lord. We are rejecting doctrine to the core. We are not understanding the will of God to the core because we are not doing what he mandated us to do. Therefore, that word we read in 2 Samuel chapter 5, from Gaza to Gezer, the things what God the Father demanded, he did it. 
and Lord God the Father helped him to smote those people till to the end of their life. The word smote is nothing but naka to smite or to strike or to beat them into pieces and to chastise them and to give judgment of the Lord. And he did whom the Philistines, the immigrants, and the word immigrants for us, the people who are alien to Bible doctrine and to his mind, from Geba or Gaba called as hill, until the point they enter into Gazer that is called as their portion, from hill to the point of portion, from the same standards where you are today, that's the place of the Lord God through the word of God which you take that breath. And that word of God is the light to you from there till to the point of the portion which is actually belonging to the Lord. Don't you know the description heaven and the earth belongs to my Yehovah? So every place you go, he says, go and make disciples. From Gaba to Gazer, from hill to the standards of every portion. Every place, hill, represents the people. Portion, that is a rightful word to the word of God. And he says, from Gaba to Gaza, I, I, I've dropped them out, Philistines. In the same manner, everywhere where there is false doctrine in the region of our place where we are surviving, through this YouTube, you can go to the entire world. That entire world belongs to my Christ. So we swipe them out or smote them out when we do according to the commandments of my law. But we are using the grace of God not to fulfill the commandments of the Lord God. That's a pain for us. We are using this grace of God, the dispensation which is gushing with grace upon grace, truth upon truth. We are using for our own flesh. Therefore, many die sin unto death. They haven't come to fulfill the Genesis 7 to 7 code which we read. Seven times kneeling down and reading the Bible and then writing the Bible twice, once the lion concept and then the bear concept. And then seven more times writing in the Goliath concept, in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, in the interlinear and being acquainted with the word of the Lord. We don't do that. Though you have been called to be a scribe, though you have been called to be a grammatias growing up, and though you have been called and said to be a king, in Deuteronomy 17, 18, what is the work of the king? The work of the king was to write a copy of the law. If that time it was the first five books of Torah, now it is the first, the entire 66 books of the Bible, because you have been called to be a king in Christ. What the word of Lord God is saying to do for us, and what are we doing? And when we are not able to meet the standards of the word of the Lord God, when we are not able to perform the will of Lord God, how we could be happy, how we could be the people of light, how we could be the people of gladness, how we could be the people of joy, and how we could be the people of great honor, of a very precious prize. The things have to be recalculated once again, dear brethren. If you still suppress, conceal and hide what the word of Lord God teaches to every man on this earth, the greater you will face the judgment before the Lord. Therefore, diligent study, 2 Timothy 2.15, for the bona fide work of the pastor teacher. Matthew 7, Luke 6 and 13, followed by Matthew 25, not to be foolish virgins, but to be wise virgins, carrying in them the oil of the word of God and carrying their cross and following my Christ every day and becoming to become grammatias, joining as disciples. That's the right work of a believer in Christ. Not that what you drink, what you eat, what you give to the church counts. It is what you have transformed your thinking from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint because the very breath of the human nature is nothing but the light of Jehovah. And as per Psalm 719 in 105, the very lamp of Jehovah is nothing but the word of God. And the lamp to your feet, he says, is the word of God. And the light for you, he says, it is the word of God. Everything that you tread along, 
it is the light or the word of god that examines you so in simple terms you have to be walking bible as del modi said long back in simple times you have to be the people philippians 2:14 and 15 in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations holding for the word of light the word of god you should shine as light luminaries in simple terms we have a burden to be in simple words predestined and conformed to the image of christ opening up our mouth it has to be divine oracles whenever we season and talk we has to be in the grace of god the salt of god the word of god in all of these things we have to be only in the word of god and to the will of god and performing these things or doing the will of god in these things we have to be the people for the will and to the work of god to the highest in simple words we have to be like christ jesus our lord of a god calling many sons unto his glory because he has crowned us with glory and honor and you don't realize the importance that the very breath you take it is the word of god and people will perish in want of understanding or in the lack of knowledge to realize that there is a light of yehovah in every breath of man and that's the breath of human when he says that light he teaches it is nothing but the word of god dear brother using the grace of god for your own selfish lustful patterns of the old sin nature to be craved or fulfilled become satisfied and become dashain voluptuously large and fat and yet you go to serve the lustful patterns of your old sin natures by becoming slaves to them and you frustrate and make ineffectual the covenant of lord god by despising it and you will be the people to face the judgment at the judgment seat of christ because you haven't done the will of god the father by using the grace of lord god to the praise of his work the way what you become hurdle to the work of god that same work or what you become a stumbling block will judge you dear brethren we have to be ready available first to say lord here i am send me we shall not be like the people of the disciples when lord of a god asked him he said i will go and bid a farewell let the dead bury the dead said the lord then to david did not learn the lesson there were some people who want to follow my christ like the foxes he said they doesn't have the holes to keep their head they have holes but the son of man doesn't have the hole to keep their head and then it teaches in luke 9 anyone who plow who puts his hand to plow and turns back is not fit for the kingdom of god teaching us that we want xyz reasons and conditions to be fulfilled in our lives rather than doing the will and the work of god dear brethren if we don't do according to the commandments of lord god your life has no meaning though you think you have given up your lives to the sacrifice of the lord we have to be very careful when we appear in his judgment seat when he's teaching to us every day what he wills what he wants and yet we being negligent because we don't consider that we have in us the lamp of yehovah and that lamp of yehovah is nothing but the word of god and greater we spend our time to be into the lustful patterns of the matrix of this lusts of the flesh the greater the time comes at the judgment seat of christ because what you saw that he will reap back and if we don't meet the standards of doctrine then you have lost it to the fullest dear brethren the thing the devil which left could come and ask it is my house but the ownership is been changed if the ownership is not been changed then he will prove that you are empty he will prove that you are cleansed he will prove that you are garnished falsely honored among men and you are empty because you are idle in doing the work of the lord scholar all and then you will pay at the judgment seat of Christ because you did not grow up in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine neither you feared about to do the will of god though he says 
It is I who have delivered you from all burdens of this life. Cast all your worries upon me, I careth for you. And we are not worrying about the things which God the Father wants us to worry, that is to grow up as grammatias, and to become like Christ Jesus our Lord our God in his thinking, in his standards of maturity, and confirm to the predestined work of the image of Christ. We are not worried about that. But we are worried about the details of life which will pay you one day. And though you may regret, Lord, I have lost, give me one more chance. It would be once you have left this earth, it is left. You cannot come back again to this earth. Therefore, every day is accountable. Every breath is accountable. Every day the grace is given to you to learn the word of God or to preach the word of God. Use it to the maximum in glorifying to the Lord. Because time is short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. Much is given for us and much has been expected from us. As he says in the Gospel of Luke 12, those who weren't known the will of God, they will be beaten with few strips. They've, that will be to the past dispensation. But for us, much is given, much is committed unto our hands, and much has been expected from us. So we cannot be the people to claim silly reasons before the Lord. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short, and the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in teaching to us the things that He prepares and keep, keeps every day what He wants us to declare because of His exegesis in the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Without the exegesis and the word of Lord God to be taught, we cannot have anything on this earth to teach. We have to nagad, we have to declare. We cannot conceal. We have to declare the infallible and inerrant word of God in the present Christendom of apostasy. We have to be the voice crying out in the wilderness to treasure up ourselves, to awaken up our eyes and make the people who are blinded in their rituals, being far away from exegesis, to pull them back to the glory of the Lord's standards. Think over these issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to be telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is so very simple. Believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry so thon long arm. Herald the word in season or out of season, because the Dharma Truma witnesses wherewith they have been called. The number one Dharma Truma witnesses in Welling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma Truma witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how ever the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, that this house ownership has been changed, and you are the owner of it. And there is no way we could be empty, or swept, or garnished with the lies of this world. But rather we have to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, becoming the slaves in the great gushing of your grace upon grace, truth upon truth bestowed upon us in the completed care of Scripture and in the completed indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in us. To this extent, Father, the things which are revealed for us in this tape, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would enlighten and challenge us and make our lives to be worthy of your calling, to be a name and a praise and a glory wherewith you have chosen us in eternity past to seem it fit that we are the people who would glorify Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God of this earth. In this church age, only in the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and through that enlightenment word. Help us, Father, to understand that the word of God is the breath of life. And understanding this word of God itself, the lamp of Jehovah will give us the breath of life. Understanding this word itself will make our every treading path on this earth only through thy word to be enlightened in the word of God.
Apart from thy word, we don't have anything else on this earth, O Lord. Help us, Father, to teach and to nagat them, the exegesis, accurately. Because, Lord, you know very well what are our deficiencies and our weaknesses. But yet, O Lord, in Christ Jesus, you have given us this power in the powerful mentoring ministry of your spiritual gift to enlighten the word. Help us, Father, to do it faithfully. So that, Sovereign Lord, when we return back home, in nothing to be ashamed, but accurately we have handled thy word. To this extent, Father, we pray that, Lord, God, the Holy Spirit would enlighten and challenge us and help us to nagad thy word rather than suppressing it, as many people are doing in the present Christendom. Help us, Father, once again to establish in these pulpits of your life on this earth, in this present 21st century, to teach word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, and also to teach iota upon iota and carrier upon carrier, not even to let go them and accurately handle thy word. To the section, Father, we pray, all things are possible unto thee, and those who believe, and help us our unbelief also to overcome a Lord, so that even we also could do thy work faithfully. Strengthen us with that spirit of courage, strengthen us with that spirit of great willing mind of thee to be readily available as your slaves in performing thy will. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father, may Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.